Good morning, this is Daz on The Cat, The Tune and The Red and joining us this morning is quite simply one of the most exciting bands in recent times, The Lemon Twigs. Hailing from Hicksville, near Long Island, New York, the duo consists of brothers Brian and Michael Didario, who grew up in the musical household with their father, an Irish folk singer, and both parents passing down their love for the Beatles. The Lemon Twigs were formed while the brothers were students at Hicksville High School, where the siblings both performed lead vocals, guitars, drums, and other instruments as well. Their first generally released album, Do Hollywood, came out in 2016 and was recorded when the brothers were just 15 and 17. And they went off touring, opening for Sunflower Bean and getting their first telly exposure on Jimmy Fallon and Conan along the way. They also appeared at a number of festivals around the world, including their first appearance at Glastonbury. The band's second album, Got to School, led to more success and a tour supporting the Arctic Monkeys in 2018. And two further f- albums followed. Their last one, last year, Everything Harmony, and this year sees their fifth studio album, A Dream Is All We Know, which is released on the 3rd of May. Without doubt, My Golden Years has been the standout song of the year so far. And the boys follow it up with They Don't Know How to Fall in Place, featured on our new Music Monday panel this week. The Lemon Twigs have been labelled as a modern day band, combining the melodic harmony, rich soft rock of Wings and Supertramp, the underground cool of Big Star and the Ramones, and the theatricality of Broadway musicals. Elton John said about the band, so left field in their songs, they don't have any rules. And even Killian Murphy said there's a great band called The Lemon Twigs that everyone should listen to. And me, Daz, from The Cat, The Tune and The Red, said they're one of the most important and exciting bands in years. Please, welcome to the show, the wonderful, the Lemon Twigs! <laughs> good morning, gentlemen. Hey. Hey. hey! hey! Good morning. How Great we, to be here. How are you doing? Good. Well, good. Right. How, how do yeah. we find you at the moment? Are you are you in between um, shows? Are you, are, you, are you writing? Are you performing? What, what are you up to at the moment? Mostly, we're we've been working on a, a record of our dads, which we've been working on for the last five years. Right. Um, that we're off trying to off, finish. You know. Yeah. We're pretty much finished with it at this at this point. But um, yeah, but we're kind of waiting for the for the tour that we're doing in uh, April and May. We're still solidifying what where exactly we're going to go then, and um, going to do some rehearsing in March. Right. Well, well, I'll come on to this in a little bit later on, but um, a lot of our listeners who are big fans, I'm going to get it in now. We want you to come to the UK and do some shows. That's that's yeah. that's that's going to be the essence of this interview, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> a lot of people would love to have you, particularly up in the northeast. Yeah, we love it there. We we were we were there not too long ago, right, Brian? Do you remember what month that oh, was? It was May of last year. But we're right? always uh, begging the bookers and everything to, to bring us back. It's just a matter of, I suppose it's a matter of like when we do it, it's a matter of doing it right and doing yeah. it at the right time for yeah. the record and stuff. And I think it's the most important place to go actually for us. So wow, brilliant. So it's kind of like when we do it, it's got to be it, it, the best time to go and stuff and all, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, it feels as though there's a massive momentum for you guys in the UK at the moment. My Golden Years was, was such a, a monumental song. We've played it for the past couple of months. It's been a fan favorite across the stations here. An amazing song. How did did that song come about um i don't know it's pretty much uh, like most of our songs uh i just demoed it on guitar or brian usually does his on piano but i just did that one on guitar and i don't know brian I, can you remember when i wrote it because i i don't really remember i remember showing it to you and i i thought it was a pretty good song As yeah Paul simon would say it's better than i normally do <laughs> I, I thought, thought oh, that's, that's better, that's than, better I than I normally do. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, you you were using, I don't know, you were just using all the tricks that you had uh, recently learned. And uh, you were putting it into a song that, like, you know, expressed a very clear idea, you know, that was apparent from when you first, it wasn't like a struggle uh, lyric or anything like that. It was like, have, time keeps on slipping control. into the future. <laughs> And, and and so how how do you guys normally write then? Do you are you are you a Lennon McCartney sort of across the desk from each other, or or later Lennon and McCartney in separate rooms come together and bring things to share? Yeah, it's more like that second one. I mean, but occasionally we'll jam on something for a while, and you know, typically even if we jam on something uh, between the two of us, one of us is spearheading it, and then. Uh, that person kind of takes it away and tidies it up and stuff. 
Right. I'm with or you. the kind of the opposite. Uh, if you need a little bridge or something like that, you know, go to the other person. We definitely do the thing of like, you know, he writes a song that's like certain style and then I copy it, right? Uh, my version of a song in that right. style, you know. We did that with like the song in my head on the last album. Yeah. Michael wrote that song and then I wrote the song Ghost Run Free, which was pretty influenced by that in, in terms of the arrangement and the overall vibe and, and you being brothers i mean do, do you argue about stuff you know particularly your music or do you get on a lot as well we definitely we get on we, we do we tend to argue when we're having to work on something that we don't want to right. work on or, or doing doing things that uh are more stressful for us like you know all the in between stuff that you have to do to a, a record not like not like interviews and things like that but more like getting materials together, artwork and all of that stuff. You right. Know, like, right. That's the thing that's more difficult. And uh, sometimes we butt heads on that. Or we butt heads, uh, in terms of the music, we'll butt heads on um, if I just want to keep redoing something for a long time or Bri and Brian is saying, let's just finally stop doing this. That kind of thing, we'll argue about that. But typically you kind of know that it's, it's wrong, you know, or something's right or something's wrong. Yeah. Now, your new single, They Don't Know How to Fall in Place, uh, was this week described as the perfect piece of sunshine pop by one of our New Music Monday panellists. How much of an example of your new album is your new single? Can we expect more of that when the uh, new album comes out in May? I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's they're pretty dense like arrangements, but that that are that are fun and you know it kind of keeps you entertained the whole the whole time as far as what's going on within the track, and then a, a ton of harmonies and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, um, it's a lot of harmonies, and I mean, it's real kind of sixties. Uh, but I would say clever, as, clever chord changes as yeah. different as um, my golden years is to they don't know how to fall in place. Probably all the songs are as different from one another. They, right. It is a pretty varied record, but then but the tone of every of most of the songs is is kind of up and um, fun. Yeah, well, we, yeah, it's varied. Like Revolver is varied, you know. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And you know, there's so much fun that comes across from your music. Like I said, we we had a new music panel uh, this week, and that was one of the things that came across so much uh, about your music was the, the incredible harmonies, the, the chord changes, which are, are, are wonderful, um, and just how much fun you seem guys seem to be having. Uh, the last couple of videos as well, you you were just having seemed to be like having the times of your lives. How much fun do you have making? those pop videos well it yeah, was a lot of fun what's doing happening it. in between takes <laughs> right is that right <laughs> oh yeah we're having a jolly good time you know what i mean no i don't know we're we're, we're just having fun because we're all friends and uh we're going through a good period we're getting along brian and i and and uh the guys in the band one of them has been our friend since we were little kids yeah the bass player danny yeah he's been our friend since we were little little kids and then reza uh, the drummer is our new friend the past two years, but uh, we just get along with them so well. So I don't know. And, I think and they're both so funny, but really funny guys. So. Yeah, I think I think particularly the video for um, My Golden Years. I mean, that was just so influenced by the monkeys and, and by so many different things. It it was just looks like a hoot. You can't you can't not yeah. watch that video and smile. Well, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's what we're going for. I I don't know. A lot of people take themselves really seriously, so it's good to be silly and kind of. We've gone through any kind of any kind of phase of wanting somebody to take you seriously, you know what I mean? Can you believe it? We've got the lemon twigs on our show this morning. We'll chat more with them after this. Why do my dreams they always wake me? wonderful sound of the lemon twigs this morning such a pleasure to have you guys on the show now for all the people that are just discovering the lemon twigs recently let's go back to the very beginning how did you two first meet no i'm joking no um <laughs> <laughs> what was the spark that made you guys want to start a band 
Well, as soon as we, I mean, when we were like three or four years old, we got into the Beatles and stuff through our yeah. dad. So that was, I mean, there really wasn't a time when we didn't want to be um, in a band. There was probably a few times, you know, growing up, a few periods where I was, you know, didn't want to be in a band with anybody else. But that was probably because I was just, you know, a moody. It may, always made the most sense for us to be in a band yeah. together. Yeah, we were always in in all the iterations of, of bands that we've had, or oh, we were always looking at each other as like the one guy that was gonna last. You know what I mean? I, I, like find some more people like like you. But and you know we have now. We have in the past been fortunate enough to find uh, really like minded people, but it it kind of takes a lot of work. You realize that when you go outside of yourself and outside of your immediate circle, and you work with a lot of other people, which we have done. Yeah. Your musical style has been described as indie rock, power pop, glam rock, indie pop, baroque rock, and art rock. Um, that was just all on just one website. How would you describe your music? Like sunshine pop. <laughs> yeah, you're pinching really that, are you? You're pinching record, that off us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's it's like it's definitely pop, like pop rock. Yeah. Honestly, that would probably be a blanket term that works for all of it would be pop rock. It's it's cuz it's not always that power pop thing and it's certainly not glam rock all the time. That that just was maybe one iteration of the band before. Yeah. But the through line would be pop structures and rock based yeah. instrumentation. Like sunshine pop. And your songs have been described by having so many influences as well. From the Beatles to the Beach Boys, from the Monkees to Supertramp, from Jellyfish to Wings. Who are your actual influences, would you say, guys? I mean, the Beatles and the Beach Boys, everybody put, puts all kinds of different people, but usually they were just influenced by the Beatles and the Beach Boys. And then Brian and I listened to tons of, you know, of course, listened to tons of music. And uh, and I like Supertramp, you know, but it's not like, this is not like a cornerstone of our musical vocabulary, Supertramp, certainly not. I mean, I love Supertramp, but it's not, you know, we just let's take in a lot of music, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, you've toured before in the UK, uh, and you've even appeared on Glastonbury as well. Uh, what are your experiences like of UK audiences? Oh, great. The best. <laughs> yeah, last time. Uh, there's probably the Japan and the UK, the best, right, Brian? Yeah. Yeah, just the most enthusiastic. It's like, feels like them, like they know all of the songs, you know, like you can really hear them, them singing. Um, and like last time we played, it really, like every day is the worst day of my life was like a sing along, which was really funny and yeah. fun. And, uh, that was before the, I think that maybe the album had just come out and, and uh, but it was great I mean we're really excited to go back there yeah well well you're back you're playing at the end of the road festival in Dorset in the UK uh, at the end of August 29th of August is September the 1st um uh, just hang on one second uh, to, to September the 1st um, but so many of our listeners have been asking when are you coming back to the UK for a tour particularly to the northeast yeah well, I don't know I mean that might we might do some shows around the festival I really don't know but it's, it's it, like I said it's really a matter of like whatever it is it will be announced soon and we definitely will come for summer or during summer or something you know something in there you know we, we, we're we kind of just on a loop you know we're just touring so yeah we get there. Brilliant. Well, we can't wait to see you up in the northeast. Newcastle or Middlesbrough or Sunderland. Put those names into uh, into your tour guide, and hopefully uh, we'll see you up here. Right, I've got some listener questions for you for the northeast favourite new band. Uh, Nikki in the borough says, what's the inspiration for the band name? Uh, here we go, around the lemon tree. Okay, all right, simple as that. <laughs> Katie in Durham asked, what music do you listen to while you're chilling? While you're, we're chilling? Yeah, chilling out, you know, putting your feet up. Oh, yeah, up. yeah relaxing the association but in those moments i like to call them uh, the disassociation okay brian um i don't know when i'm chilling um <laughs> when i'm chilling when i'm chilling <laughs> now there's a song title for I you might... you can have that you can have that oh, when i'm thanks. chilling it's for the next album brian you can oh. use that <laughs> i think i will I, i'm gonna put it down write it down in my little notebook <laughs> yeah. um maybe like curtis mayfield or something all right okay very good um now simon in newcastle he's got he's got boys that are two years apart like you two uh, and all they do is fight how do you two get on so well Mm. Oh, well, we used to fight a lot. We have a deep uh, dependency. Like, right. like we're very uh, codependent. So, I mean, I don't know how to drive. So maybe one of them doesn't 
learn how to drive, and then the other one has to take them. <laughs> and so the one person can hang everything over their head, and then but then the the person who doesn't drive has to use all of their mental faculties, and the person who does drive doesn't just let it just be blank. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. You have to have really what it really has to be is that the two people have to have huge blind spots and he, like in order to like really kind of feel like without each other they don't even make up like what A one person, person. Could do. yeah 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 right okay um jane and gate said has asked please come to the northeast on tour please 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 she'll even make you some tea <laughs> Um, so we that's get one. Tea anywhere. <laughs> oh, I get tea on the street. No, here. no, not like northeast tea. <laughs> not like proper northeast tea. Uh, listen, uh, Danny, okay. Danny in Hartlepool has asked, "Do you get nervous performing on big shows like Jimmy Fallon? What a performance that was, by the way." Well, I'll tell you what. They were all nervous, but I was prepared, and I wasn't nervous. I'm very proud to say. But me announcing that is going to make it so that if we ever get to do something like that again, I'll be shaking in my boots <laughs> i was so i was so nervous before and i was practicing my windmills because <laughs> i've done windmills before to varying like degrees of of, of effect of skill like, yeah. and effect i, and I didn't it, want yeah. it you know if you go for it it has to be good and we were backstage and i was practicing it and there was a a, a glass casing uh on the wall and five minutes before we went on i Put my hand through it, and it shattered. No way! The glass went all over the floor, and my hand was bleeding. And I had to, I had to see the nurse, and she put a couple bandages. Yeah. And it was like, and and then, bleeding, and that really bleeding, set the tone, bleeding, so that when yeah. he was on stage, he was stunned because it was so close to. So it kind of thinking went out the window, you know. Right. But for me, I did a lot of work to try to, so that when I got on there, I wasn't nervous, and it. It kind of worked. I mean, it helps because I don't think it's really live, right, Brian? It's it's not, but they really they don't want you to do another take. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something would it's have a lot to of pressure, really but it's also break. like your your if your pants fall down, it's not going to be an issue. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, thankfully, your your and, and your windmill was great, by the way, as well. Looked and I mean, it, it was a brilliant performance. It really, really was. <laughs> and and Julie in Normanby wants to know what's the best act you've ever seen live. That's a good question. <laughs> Probably Kiss. Right. Wow, I bet there was a I few mean, windmills in there. I guess there's a lot of crack, but it was really good. Who did we? Oh, the well, uh, Herman's Hermits. Oh wow, we, we also saw Leonard Cohen on his last. Oh tour yeah, saw his final tour. And uh, we saw it at Radio City, and it was just like the intensity was like yeah. it was great. We all were like glowing, glowing from that. Top three. Yep. Kiss, Herman's Hermits, Leonard Cohen. Wow. Three, now there is an eclectic very mix. Acts. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, I mean, what's next for you guys? Obviously, you've got the the album and the tour. You must be pretty excited uh, about the next year ahead of you. Yeah. We're... Well, what's next, Brian? I guess we're gonna. Well, no, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna finish our dad's record. We're probably gonna finish another one of our own records. Yeah. Um, you know, get some more music videos together. That's in the immediate week. Yeah. Um, and uh, get more music together. Well, we're so delighted. Thank you so much for coming on our show this morning and speaking to us. We're honestly, we're, we're so, so pleased. Good luck with the new album that's coming out and, uh, and the tour. And I don't know if you get the idea, but we are desperate for you to come up to the Northeast uh, on your tour. So yeah. we'd love to see you in the summer and get yourself in, the, get you here in the studio and we'll make you some tea as well. Cool. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to that. All the very best, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Morning. The competition and the rain.